Well, it's one of the world's deadliest diseases. The Hendra virus has a 50% survival rate. But now human trials for treatment are about to start in Queensland, where four people have died from the disease. Recruiting gets underway shortly, but with more than 30 outbreaks of the bat-borne disease on horse properties in the last few years, it can't come soon enough. Cathy McLeish reports. And thank you very much, uh, Peter, and it's absolutely fantastic to be here uh, with you today in what I think is an extremely important and far-reaching announcement. In Brisbane this week came the news Linda Rogers had waited for. Four years after the death of her husband from Hendra virus, human trials on a treatment are about to begin. When some poor, wretched person finds themselves in Alistair's position, we need something more to offer them. And that's why this uh, advancement with the monoclonal antibody is just wonderful news. In late July 2009, Rockhampton vet Alistair Rogers attended a sick horse on a property in Queensland Central West. He knew about Hendra virus, but there'd been less than one outbreak a year, none of them in his region. There was the awareness of Hendra virus um, and the potential risk, I suppose, had been underestimated. He was certainly caught off guard. The alarm was raised quickly, but not before he'd come into contact with one of the world's rarest and deadliest viruses, which is spread in bodily fluids from flying foxes to horses and then onto humans. Initially, when he told me that he'd been exposed, at that stage, there was a 50% chance of, uh, of survival rate. And I, in my ignorance and stupidity, just automatically thought he'd be fine. It's a terribly traumatic time for those people, not knowing whether they will develop Hendra virus, um, waiting quite some weeks before they are given the cl all clear. When he did show symptoms, he deteriorated very rapidly within about 48 hours. It was just an incredible decline. Since the first outbreaks in 1994, when horse trainer Vic Rail died of the disease, scientists have been trying to decode the Hendra virus puzzle. By the time Alistair Rogers was infected, researchers in the United States had made a significant breakthrough. Using DNA technology, they developed a monoclonal antibody for Hendra virus. It was offered to Alistair Rogers. I'd say desperate is an almost seems like an understatement. You know, you, you, anxiety is just completely overwhelming you uh, and you just don't know where to go. Alistair, to my knowledge, was the first human to receive it. It was explained clearly that it was highly experimental, uh, but at the time, as I said, Alistair was on life support. Uh, his medical tests came back with very poor result. Uh, for me, it was a fairly easy decision to go ahead and try it. Uh, even if it didn't help him, I was hoping the knowledge that they got from it would help other people. The treatment came too late for the Rogers family. But over the next three years, the antibody was given to three more people. We know that these persons that we've treated were at very high risk of developing Hendra virus by virtue of their significant exposure to infected horses, to their respiratory secretions and to their blood. They were all administered the antibody within the incubation period and none of them uh, subsequently shown to be, inf uh, to be infected. Groundbreaking results from the most recent animal trials have just been published. You can actually infect the monkeys with a tenfold lethal dose of virus and wait as long as five days before giving the first dose of antibody. And then about 48 hours later, we'll give a second dose. And those, all of those animals, 100% of those animals will survive the infection. Professor that. Chris Broder developed the antibody, which binds to protein on Hendra virus particles, blocking entry to healthy human cells. The immune system then fights off the virus. He says it's also effective on the related bat-borne Nipah virus, which has killed more than 200 people in Southeast Asia. At least as far as data in the literature goes, um, no other antibody to such a pathogenic virus infection has been shown that you can administer it after you infect the animal. 
and actually pr protect the animal from uh, the eventuality of death, in this case because both viruses are so potently lethal. In 2010, the Australian Institute for Bioengineering and Nanotechnology at the University of Queensland were approached to make batches of the antibody for human use. Professor Peter Gray heads the institute. So the work that was done here was about creating an antibody that was pure enough for human use? That's right. We received the cell line from Professor Broder in the United States and then worked up a process to make very high purity materials. What they do here is take the cells, grow them under very controlled conditions and then they secrete the antibody into the supernatant and we purify it from that. In three years, the Institute has produced 200 grams of the Hendra antibody. It sounds like a tiny dose, but it's been enough to supply the CSIRO, the US laboratory and a stockpile in case of emergencies. There's also enough for the first human trials. The trials to test the safety and side effects of the monoclonal antibody will be conducted in Queensland over the next 12 to 18 months. It's a last line of defence. Authorities say vaccinating horses, better safety precautions and separating animals from flying foxes have drastically cut the number of high-risk exposures. Dr Geoffrey Playford will oversee the trials. If successful and approved by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, the antibody would then be readily available. We would have much more confidence in being able to offer potentially exposed people this antibody therapy, be able to counsel them, to be able to...